I'm going to try something a little bit different. I'm going to try to uh, read to you. I'm going to call this piece um, Ownership. And I'll reveal the author at the end of it. It's fairly short. I'll try and uh, give it justice in the reading. The sense of ownership in general is always to be encouraged. The humans are always putting up claims to ownership, which sound equally funny in heaven and in hell. And we must keep them doing so. Much of the modern resistance to chastity comes from men's belief that they own their bodies. Those vast and perilous estates pulsating with the energy that made the worlds, in which they find themselves without their consent, and from which they are ejected at the pleasure of another. It is as if a royal child whom his father has placed for love's sake in titular command of some great province under the real rule of wise counselors should come to fancy he owns the cities, the forests, the corn, in the same way as he owns the bricks on the nursery floor. We produce this sense of ownership not only by pride, but by confusion. We teach them not to notice the different senses of the possessive pronoun. The finely graded differences that run from my boots through my dog, my servant, my wife, my father, my master and my country to my God. They can be taught to reduce all these senses to that of my boots. The my of ownership. Even in the nursery, a child can be taught to mean by my teddy bear not the old imagined recipient recipient of affection to whom it stands in a special relationship for that is what the enemy will teach them to mean if we are not careful side note in this passage the enemy is god but the bear i can pull to pieces if i like i'll repeat even in the nursery, a child can be taught to mean by my teddy bear, not the old imagined recip recipient of affection to whom it stands in a special relation. For that is what the enemy will teach them to mean if we are not careful. But, quote, the bear I can pull to pieces if I like. And at the other end of the scale, we have taught men to say, my God in a sense not really very different from my boots, meaning, quote, the God on whom I have a claim for my distinguished services and whom I exploit from the pulpit, the God I have done a corner in. And all the time the joke is that the word mine in its fully possessive sense cannot be uttered by a human being about anything. In the long run, either our father, he's referring to Lucifer, or the enemy, referring to God, will say, mine, of each thing that exists, and specifically, of each man. They will find out in the end, never fear, to whom their time their souls and their bodies really belong. Certainly not to them. Whatever happens. At present, the enemy, once again referring to God, at present, the enemy says mine 
of everything on the pedantic, legalistic ground that he made it. Our father, referring to Lucifer, hopes in the end to say mine of all things on the more realistic and dynamic ground of conquest. And to finish out the passage, your affectionate uncle, screw tape. That passage um, is in the screw tape letters. It's a book written by C.S. Lewis. Um, it was written in 1942. And um, his more famous works that you're probably familiar with um, include The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, and um, which I, 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 I kind of screwed up there, which is one of the books of the Chronicles of Narnia, I believe. So anyway, he is a Christian writer, and um, in this book he is he's writing um, somewhat satirically as, as a demon advisor to... Um, to his young nep nephew, who is trying to um, tempt a soul into um, into um, following uh, the wrong path. That's it. Bye.